Here's the first lesson for the discrete functions unit. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about geometric and arithmetic sequences of numbers. But to get you interested in sequences of numbers, let's start by looking at this very famous sequence of numbers, the Fibonacci sequence. Take a minute and see how many patterns you can find in this sequence of numbers. Pause the video and give it a try. Alright, hopefully you were able to find some interesting patterns. The first pattern you probably noticed is that any Fibonacci number is the sum of the two previous Fibonacci numbers. For example, 8 is the sum of the two previous numbers, 3 and 5. 55 is a sum of 21 and 34. And using this pattern, you could continue this sequence of numbers forever. To get this next number in the sequence, we would just add 144 and 233 to get 377 as the next number in this sequence. And we can continue that sequence indefinitely. I could summarize that pattern by saying the nth Fibonacci number is equal to Fibonacci number n minus 1 plus Fibonacci number n minus 2. This is what's called a recursive sequence, but you don't have to worry about this notation yet. I'll teach you throughout the unit the notations we can use to describe sequences of numbers. Another pattern you might have noticed is that every third number in this sequence is an even number. The third number, sixth, ninth, twelfth, and the pattern would continue. They're all divisible by two. They're all even numbers. And another pattern, if you add the first n Fibonacci numbers, so let's say the first three Fibonacci numbers, 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4, that equals the Fibonacci number 2 away from it, this one here, minus 1. And that pattern would hold true. The first four Fibonacci numbers, if I add them together, I get 7, which is 1 less than the sixth Fibonacci number. I in the first 5 equals 12, which is 1 less than the seventh Fibonacci number. So I could summarize that by saying the sum of the first n Fibonacci numbers is equal to the Fibonacci number 2 greater than n minus 1. And the last pattern, which is probably one of the most famous patterns of the Fibonacci sequence, involves the golden ratio, which we represent with the Greek letter phi. In case you don't know the golden ratio, it's equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2, which has an approximate value of 1.618. Do you see that value in the sequence of numbers? Well, if you take any pair of numbers in the Fibonacci sequence and divide the bigger number divided by the smaller number, you get a number that approximates the golden ratio. 5 divided by 3 is about 1.67. We can get a better approximation if we move further along the sequence. If you pick these two numbers and do 233 divided by 144, you get a number that approximates the golden ratio accurately to four decimal places. So using limit notation, we could say that the limit of Fibonacci number n plus 1 divided by Fibonacci number n, as n approaches infinity, is equal to the golden ratio phi. So the purpose of this question was just to spark some interest in sequences of numbers. Let's move on to now what you're going to need to know for this unit. We'll start by looking at a couple different definitions. Let's start by defining what a sequence of numbers is. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers identified by a pattern or rule that may stop at some point or continue indefinitely. And for any sequence of numbers, we want to be able to write an explicit formula, or what we call a formula for the general term of the sequence, which is just a formula that represents the value of any term in a sequence, Tn, relative to the term number, n. So basically, it's just a formula that shows the relationship between the value of the term, which we represent as term n, to its term number. And we use the variable n for that. And to help you understand this a little bit better, let me give you an example of what a sequence of numbers looks like. Let's say we have this sequence. It's just a list of numbers separated by commas, and then these three dots means the sequence continues. Now these numbers, 3, 7, 11, and 15, are the actual values of the numbers in the sequence. So these are the values of the terms, which we represent with t sub n. And each of those values can be indexed by their term number, represented by n. 3 is the first term, 7 is the second term, 11 is the third term, and so on. So this just means that the first term is 3. So term 1 is 3. And the second term is 7, which means term number 2 in the sequence is 7, and so on. 
hopefully you get the distinction between n representing the term number and t sub n actually being the actual value of the term in the sequence. And now let's look at a couple formulas that describe sequences of numbers. Example one says, write the first three terms of each sequence, given the explicit formula for the nth term of the sequence. So part A, we have this formula right here. It says term n is equal to three times n squared minus one. We wanna write the first three terms. So we'll start by finding term one. To find term number one, I just have to sub in one for n. And when I evaluate that, one squared is one, three times one is three, minus one is two. So the first term, term one, in the sequence is two. Let's now find term two. To find term two, I just replace the n in the equation with two. Following the correct order of operations, two squared is four, times three is 12, minus one is 11. And lastly, let's find the third term. Term three is just three times three squared minus one. Evaluating that, I get 26, which means the first three terms of this sequence are 2, 11, and 26. Let's try out another example. Part B, this formula tells us the relationship between the value of any term and its term number. We'll start by finding the first term, term 1. I would just replace n with 1 in the equation, which would give me 0 over 1, which is 0. And then for term 2, I just replace the n's with 2, and I figure out the second term is a half. And for the third term, term 3 would equal 3 minus 1 over 3, which is 2 thirds. So the first three numbers of this sequence are 0, 1 half, and 2 thirds. And now that you know how the formulas work for showing the relationship between the value of a term and its term number, let's look at two very specific types of sequences arithmetic and geometric sequences, and we'll learn how to create those formulas for those sequences. Starting with arithmetic sequences, let's look at these two sequences of numbers. Let me zoom in on them for you so you can look at them better. Do you notice any patterns between the numbers? In part A, you'll probably notice that to get from one number to the next, you add four, and that pattern holds true for the entire sequence. And for part B, to get from one number to the next, you subtract four. And that pattern also holds true to get each next number in the sequence. Any sequence of numbers that has this common difference between consecutive numbers is called an arithmetic sequence. They're called arithmetic because they increase or decrease by a constant difference. And if you can't see that constant difference, it just means if you take any pair of values in the sequence and do the second one minus the first one, for example, 18 minus 14, you get four. And that would be the same difference for any pair of numbers in this sequence. 22 minus 18 is four, and 26 minus 22 is four. And that works for this sequence down here as well. Three minus seven is negative four, and so on. What our goal for the next part of this lesson is going to be is to be able to write the formula for the general term of any arithmetic sequence. And remember the formula for the general term always relates the value of the term which the actual numbers are the values of the terms, to the term number, so to n, right? The first term is 14, the second is 18, and so on. So we need to show the relationship between the term number and the actual value of the term. Well, notice in this sequence of numbers, to get the second term in the sequence, 18, we take the first term in the sequence and add the common difference once. But if I wanted the third term in the sequence, I would start at my first value, 14, and add the common difference two times. And for the fourth term, I would add the common difference of four to my first term, one, two, three times. So we could probably actually write the formula for the general term of this specific sequence. To find the value of the nth term of the sequence, we would take our first value, 14, and add the common difference, which is four, not n times, but n minus one times, right? Because if we wanted the fourth term, it's added only three times. And let's actually use this formula to calculate the fourth term and make sure it gives us 26. It would be 14 plus four times four minus one. And yes, that is 26. And now let's actually generalize this formula for any arithmetic sequence. 
the formula for the general term of any arithmetic sequence would look like this. Term n is equal to a plus n minus 1 times d, where these variables, let's actually define them. a is the first term of the sequence. This d stands for the constant common difference. n stands for the term number. And tn stands for the actual value of the term in the sequence. So to find the value of any term, you take your first term and add the common difference n minus 1 times. So let's go ahead and work with this formula in example number 2. Part A says determine a formula for the general term of this arithmetic sequence. Well, since it's an arithmetic sequence, I know there's a common difference. The difference between each pair of consecutive terms is 4, right? 18 minus 14 is 4, 22 minus 18 is 4, and so on. It's the same sequence we were working with before. And the formula for the general term of an arithmetic sequence looks like this. And since the formula needs to relate the value of a term to the term number, I need to sub into this formula for a and d so that it represents this exact specific sequence of numbers. Well, a is the first term, which is 14, and the common difference is 4. This formula can be used to find the value of any term based on its term number in this sequence. And part b says actually use this formula to find the value of the 30th term of the sequence. Using this formula will be a lot faster than trying to list out 30 terms of that sequence. Term 30, we just have to sub in 30 for n. And if I evaluate this using the correct order of operations, I have 29 times 4, that's 116. Adding that with 14, I get 130 would be the 30th term in the sequence. And then let's look at that second sequence that we had earlier, which is 7, 3, negative 1, negative 5. The common difference between those values, well, to get from one number to the next, I would just subtract 4. So to write the formula for the general term, I know it has this format, a plus n minus 1 times the common difference, and I need to sub in for a and d so that it shows the relationship between the value of the term and the term number. a is the first term, which in this sequence is 7, and d is the common difference, which in this case is negative 4. And then let's use this formula in part b to find the value of the 41st term of this sequence. I'll just sub in 41 for n into the formula. I would have 40 times negative 4, that's negative 160. So the 41st term of the sequence would be negative 153, which means if I were to extend this sequence of numbers so that there were 41 numbers written, the 41st number would be negative 153. And now let's move on to the second type of sequences we're going to study, geometric sequences. Looking at these two sequences of numbers, notice there is not a common difference. The difference between the first two, I would have to add 4. But then in the next pair of numbers, I would have to add 12. So there's not a constant difference. But there is a constant ratio between the values of numbers. If I multiply the first number by 3, I get 6. And if I multiply 6 by 3, I get 18. And so on. And if you don't see that common ratio, if in any pair of numbers, you divided the second number by the first number, you would get 3. 18 divided by 6 is 3, and 54 divided by 18 is 3. So there is a constant ratio. That's what makes this a geometric sequence. And there's a constant ratio for this pattern of numbers as well. But be careful, we always want to describe the ratio in terms of what we would multiply the first number by to get the second number in any pair of numbers. So 80 times a half equals 40, and 40 times a half equals 20, and 20 times a half equals 10. And remember, you can get that ratio by in any pair of numbers doing the second number divided by the first number. And if that ratio is constant, it's a geometric sequence. 40 divided by 80 is a half, 20 divided by 40 is a half, and 10 divided by 20 is a half. Because they are all constant common ratios, it's a geometric sequence. And the formula for the general term of a geometric sequence is fairly similar to that of an arithmetic sequence. How it would look, however, is to get the value of any term in a geometric sequence, you take your first term, which we know we represent with a, but we don't add anything to it. We multiply it by the common ratio n minus 1 times. 
And remember the exponent just tells you how many factors of the base you have. So basically we multiply a by r n minus one times. And we can see that in these sequences, right? To get the fourth number, we multiply the first number by the common ratio one, two, three times. And let's define each of those parameters. A, once again, is the first term in the sequence. R, in this case, stands for the constant common ratio. N is the term number. And Tn is the actual value of the term in the sequence. And now let's do a couple examples with geometric sequences. In this sequence of numbers, part A says to find the formula for the general term. Well, I notice in this sequence of numbers, there is a common ratio between consecutive pairs of values. Multiplying any number by 3 gets you to the next number in the sequence. So because there's a common ratio, it's a geometric sequence, and the value of any term in that sequence can have this format, tn equals a times r to the power of n minus 1. And I'll have to sub into this formula for a and r so that the formula shows the relationship between the value of the term and its term number. Well, a is just the first term, which is 2, and r is the common ratio, which is 3. And we can get that by an any pair, dividing the second number by the first number. 6 divided by 2 is 3, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and so on. So that's our formula for the general term of the sequence. Let's use that formula in part b to find the value of the ninth term. Find term 9, I would have to take my first term, which is 2, and multiply it by 3, 9 minus 1 times. So multiply it by 3, 8 times. And if I do that, term 9, I would find out is equal to 13,122. Just be careful when evaluating this to follow the correct order of operations. Evaluate your power first, 3 to the power of 8, and then multiply that answer by 2. You could not multiply 2 by 3 first, so be careful with that. And let's do one last example. Here's another geometric sequence. We want the formula for the general term, and then we'll use it to find the value of the ninth term. First of all, let's check if there's a common ratio. Well, 90 divided by 270 is one third, 30 divided by 90 is a third, and 10 divided by 30 is a third. Which means, if I took any number and multiplied it by a third, I would get the next number in the sequence. So my common ratio in this sequence is one third. So in writing the formula for the general term, I can replace the common ratio with one third, and I'll replace A, the first number, with 270. So to get the value of any term, I just multiply 270 by one third n minus one times. So to find the value of the ninth term, I would take 270 and multiply it by one third nine minus one times. And doing that, you would find out that the value of the ninth term is 270 over 6,561, which can reduce to 10 over 243. All right, that's the end of our first lesson where I briefly introduced you to arithmetic and geometric sequences. Make sure to try out the practice questions at jensenmath.ca and then follow up with the rest of the unit so you can learn more about what we can do with these types of sequences of numbers. Jensen Math!